Hello everyone. Keep going. Um, <laughs> what a privilege to be here. Um, and it's a privilege to be a landscape architect. And I think Skinner um, shouldn't have been written out um, because he was incredibly influential and he was very much the same sort of character, I imagine, as um, Ian McCarg. Quite a difficult person, very, very demanding and challenging, but he, he kind of made us strong. So um, to be um, part of the McCarg stable, as it were, is uh, quite extraordinary. And um, I think what I meant by calling this short talk um, Second Nature is that it, it feels like Second Nature for all of us that have been practicing for many decades to be thinking the way in which we were brought up in this institution. Um, uh, so it's incredible to think it's been 50 years since this was published. So, um, you know, has it, have we taken 50 years to realize the impact of um, the human community on, on the planet? Um, to realize that we must be ecocentric, not egocentric in our actions. Um, I mean, this evening is a celebration um, of the meaning of a continuum. And um, there are many webs within webs, as Brian has, has um, illuminated this evening. And the anniversary comes at a good time um, to remind ourselves that there is uh, no time for apathy. And with climate change crisis, uh, let's talk about embodied carbon. Let's talk about how our impact can be positive. You know, if um, it's good to know that Brian 2018 includes hard landscape. So let's depave. Let's um, pave less by 25%. Let's plant 25% more trees. Let's therefore create greater ecosystem services and greater carbon sequestration. Um, we are part of the solution. We have a great privileged position. So let's step up and make our presence known. Um, there are three projects I just want to highlight that we've been working on over many years. One is this kind of an amazing umbrella project called the All London Green Grid, which was ini initiated um, by Ken Livingston, the first mayor of London. And this was strategic, it was incremental, it was opportunistic, it was imaginative. Um, and it did drop away the borough boundaries. It did look at London as a landscape. And he also employed a series of small practices which collaborated together with ease to cycle and walk and understand the landscape of the city. Um, and so, you know, it felt a natural thing for us to be involved in this as Design with Nature runs deep in the bloodstream. Um, and it uh, seems second nature for us to cultivate the uh, and nurture the relationship between different communities and different disciplines. So this, this umbrella project created the opportunity for provocations, and this was one where there was an underspend and we were asked to come up with an idea for a big eye-catching project. I got on my Brompton, went down to um, the Thames and uh, the, um, uh, down to the Thames Barrier, cycled around and, and realized that actually there was a really fantastic opportunity for a, a, a type of park which was um, very familiar to um, Macar, which was more of a network rather than a kind of Victorian large piece of land, a network of parks that um, could spread over 360 hectares um, with the river not separating but joining. Um, and that um, became a part of a brief that started to influence the way in which those neighbourhoods were viewed. Um, and the Green Grid was also, is also the umbrella for realising projects. And this is one of the projects that we realised uh, through engagement. And engagement, or as London 2012 called it, 
convergence, which is rather strange, but anyway, they had their own language in the Olympic team, um, was not um, a kind of superficial action. It was action research. It was about doing things uh, together with uh, disaffected communities. Um, multiple actions, multiple perspectives brought together um, to look at how to create a critical inf uh, interface between existing communities, a heritage landscape, the Olympic Park, um, and to celebrate strange and intriguing ecological patchiness. And it was inspired by looking at closely, looking closely at multiple acts of disrupt disturbance and fragmentation, um, and also uh, valuing the existing self-seeded so-called natural assets, which were not to be overlooked, and then working through sectional studies to create a cultural heritage, to, to reinforce this cultural heritage, and to create, if you like, a way in which you can transition from the upper parkland level down to the down to the historic canal side in a language that um, was, was meaningful on the surface while being enormously influenced by hidden historic infrastructure of two 42-inch mains that supplied all the fresh water from the Upper Lee Valley to Canary Wharf. They determined the fact that that was a parkland because the you know, development could, could happen anywhere near those mains. And so I found that rather poetic that this sort of hidden infrastructure actually made the space for that parkland area without which um, there would have been no project. So we evolved a um, embellished towpath, if you like, uh, a, a sequence of riparian experiences and defined using the planning terminology of the Olympic Park, which was to do with outputs and specific outputs against planning um, requirements for biodiversity as play, um, because it is, and there's nothing better than mucking about in a muddy ditch, but that was working with multiple soil specifications with ecologists, soil scientists, um, as well as very close working with the engineers. And that has created a ribbon of artificial countryside, if you like, in the heart of the East End. Um, the second project, we won an international competition just last December, and um, it's working with Tracy Emin in Oslo to respond to her work of art, a, a major new commission called The Mother, and integrate a new la landscape as part of that significant public commission uh, for the Munch Museum. Um, and Monk had his own tortuous relationship with nature. Um, and this piece is actually a huge nine meter um, bronze, which is set out in the fjord, um, exposed, vulnerable, very, very feminine. Um, and what our response was to set that within um, a you know, very delicate meadow landscape. Um, in fact, we, we, we kind of qualified it as a seabed, a seabed using local provenance seed that would be collected by um, and, and in collaboration with various institutes um, in the region um, to uh, um, create an ecology that was inspired by the, by the um, Oslo Fjord itself and by and align with the natural geological orientation of the Oslo Fjord. So it's an incredibly exciting project which looks at bringing nature back into an area which is actually qualified as an urban desert in terms of biodiversity. Um, and you can say, well, what's the purpose of 280 square metres of meadow? Well, it's going to have a hugely high profile. We're going to integrate that as part of a science project, um, engaging with many interesting scientists about urban bee pollination to see how quickly the bees find it, and, and also to use it in terms of education and um, 
uh, sort of shared ownership with uh, other surrounding environmental projects. And finally, making space in Dalston, which was totally process driven. It was um, rather an unprepossessing project in the beginning by the London Development Agency, as it then was, and Hackney, um, and to, to find environmental enhancements in the neighbourhood. But it became this extraordinary expression of, um, uh, of cultural, haughty cultural, uh, collaborative, cumulative community energy. It was the start of an ongoing and challenging relationship, design relationship that we have with MUF Architecture Art, which is very stimulating. And one of those projects was um, a, a 0.2 hectares of brownfield behind a hoarding, which was identified, all the projects were identified through our engagement, um, which have been left um, after illegal tipping for some many decades. And, um, and what we did was a, uh, to unlock and create a discreet and um, a, a discreet uh, suggestion of what might be a future development of a garden culture, if you like. We had a very small budget, um, and um, so we did made a few moves. We didn't remove the hoarding. We just created a gateway in it. We Prime the site through collaborative work with the Barbican to have a temporary occupation and exhibition with uh, an art collective that drew people there to make bread. And then we re envisaged it as a place for, um, you know, sustenance at the end of the day for contact with nature through planting an urban forest, creating pockets of soil for growing um, and instigating um, conversations on stewardship to, uh, and evolving a kind of unofficial research hub for health and well-being um, for some of our work that we're doing with, the, um, with King's College London and Artists Collective Nomad projects. Um, and this really was a process of deliberative planning, not linear, but constant feedback loops in order that when it came to the planning decisions, we had people in the council chamber who were there to support the project, not to um, object to it. And it's all at risk because it's on land that's not owned by the council, but what's developed is such a strong culture around the project that it started to define other currencies of value, which talk about tranquility or that sense of the importance of friendships, love, biodiversity. So 0.2 of a hectare is reaching some 150,000 people per annum um, with an international profile. So let's be fleet of foot, let's seek to influence and lead by example. Um, our social enterprise landscape learn was initiated on the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Concern by McCarg and his colleagues. Um, over the loss of all contact with the basic process of, processes of nature. 50 years on, we must get out there and share our knowledge, not in a didactic manner, but in one that's generous. We know there is no single solution or one-shot cure. We need collaborative, innovative solutions to climate change, and we're all good at that in different ways. Landscape architecture is perfectly positioned to empower com communities to go on and self-initiate, to champion design with nature, and to contribute to scientific research. And to inspire. Thank you.